All right, so preparing for your next NG upgrade, guys. So imagine you're a new developer that you've just joined the company and, and you're a new developer and you're not yet quite familiar with the system yet. So what you have to do, the first thing you have to do is get clone, obviously, the project that you're going to be working on. But what happens when what you get cloning is not just one project, but it's multiple projects spread across, it, it, uh, spread across the same namespace. It's the same app, but different, um, different, we have different um, repositories for each of the components of the app. So you can have one front end for the users, one front end for the admin, one back end for, for, for a simple service, and you have, you have the, the entire structure is built on a microservice based architecture, which everyone should be doing, right? So then when you get there, you have to clone, all right, I have to clone my first front end, all right, that's awesome. Then I clone my second front end. Then I clone my third front end, and I have no idea what's going on. Then I clone my back end, and then it complains about a missing, uh, complains about a missing uh, back end that I need to run. Then I need to clone that, configure that, and I have to do all this process. And it's such a huge process to deal with because you have to keep track of each and every repo that you work on. Which brings us to today's talk, which is going to help us manage that kind of um, separated dependencies. But before we talk, but before we get to the talk, I have to introduce myself, it's, it's customary. I am Iron Man, uh, I, at least that's what I want to be. <laughs> and I am that developer that I just described. I am the person struggling to find out the different kind of apps that, are, that, that, we, were, that we are working on in our company. Which brings us to Nawal NX. Nowl NX helps us manage mono repos. So a mono repo is just one repo where you store your entire code. Now, when we talk about mono repos, we talk about enterprise scale. So when, when we talk about enterprise scale, we literally mean multiple teams with multiple apps and multiple shared libraries, right? So meaning that in your, in, in your, in your company, you can have say three apps that your company manages but each of those apps have their own libraries and their libraries can be reused on the other apps and those other apps also depend on third-party apps that you download via node modules or enterprise scale could mean one huge app that your company is working on However, it has multiple modules and you're working on either one or two or a couple of those modules and another team is working on the rest of the modules. And what you really want is to have everyone in your, in your, in your company to use the same UI components library, the same modules, the same interfaces. For example, if you, if you have a team that's working on a web app, for instance, you want to ensure that the experience feels the same on mobile and it feels the same as well on, on a tablet version. That way we're using the same components. That way when you switch from your web, when you, when you switch from your web uh, page and you download the app, the experience feels the same when you are on mobile or when you are on tablet or when you are on a desktop application. So let's talk about the project structure when we're going to deal with a mono repo. Generally, the idea of a monolith means that you have one app and it has a bunch of dependencies that you have to manage. A modular, a modular monolith means that I still have that same app, but now I can swap out different modules, swap out different libraries and interchange them with other, with other modules. So when you have one app and another app, what can happen is that eventually they're going to use the same library. So it can happen that app one is using for instance, NGRX, and your second app again is using another NGRX. Now you have two clones of the same library, right? So what we want to talk about is a shared library as a separate package and a separate repo, which is what usually happens here. So we, we, we usually have the third module as a dependency of each of the two apps that it uses. Which brings us to NX workspaces. 
Now, an NX Workspaces introduces the concept of a monorepo. So being a monorepo means that we have all of our apps on one repo, all of our libraries on one repo. That way, oh, this is the, so we have all of our apps on one repo, one package.json, one node modules, one set of configs. And what your app generally would look like on, a, on an NX workspace would be, I have apps, my app one and my app two that I just showed you, and all the libraries that, th that those two apps share, right? So some of the pros and some of the pros of using a mono repo would be having unified versioning. So I know that when I'm on when I'm in my version of the app, I know that everyone is on the same release on the same version. Every, we know that everything on a particular commit will work, right? So nobody's going to push any commits that a build is particular is, is particular failing for a certain app because when you do a commit, it, it does a build for all the apps that you have, and then it checks which ones are building, making sure that you don't commit any code that is breaking. It promotes code sharing and reuse meaning that I can write one library and then use it over and over again across all my different apps. It's easy to split libraries into modules that I can reuse over again. And it's easier to, to, to manage the dependencies across your different apps because it's just one dependency for each app. So this, this app has this dependency and these are the apps that are using said particular dependency. There's one build set up and code IDEs are workspace aware, meaning that when you create an NX workspace, it is aware that it is an NX workspace and it knows how to handle said particular workspace. And there's a consistent developer experience across all your app. Imagine if you had five apps in your company and it feels like just one developer wrote that app. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? So some of the cons of using a monorepo would be Upgrading it would be when you're upgrading a library, it requires a change on all the apps that are affected. And sometimes you may not have permissions to a particular part of the repo, but that's about all the cons that you can have for using a mono repo or more, doesn't matter. <laughs> so what does NX consist of? When you, when you download NX, when you do an NPM install NX, what NX comes with is generators, linters, formatters, runtime libraries, and scripts. And they are all built on top of the Angular CLI. So if we talk about generators, for instance, when I talk about generators, I mean that uh, when I, can, I can use the Angular CLI to generate portions of my app. For instance, if I do create an X workspace, it, it, it creates uh, code for me, it auto-generates code for me where it separates the apps and the libs and the different tools that I'm going to be using. And it writes out all the, it writes out all the code that I'm going to need as setup. And then when I, when I do an ng generate my app, it knows the right place to put the app under the my apps folder. And when I, and when I do like an app module, it automatically does the import to the relevant app module for said particular app that you just created. And then when you do like an ng generate UI components, say now you have two apps, you have my app and you have new app, and you want to use this, U, this new UI components that you're doing, right? It, what, what's going to happen is now this new UI components module is going to be shared through, through both of the apps that you're using nice and neatly down on the libs folder. And then it automatically gets imported to the module.ts file. And then if you want to create a, if you want to create a normal library file that isn't a module, say so instance you want to create an interface or you want to create a model or you want to create something that isn't necessarily linked to the UI, something that can be used on both the back end and the front end, you can just use the generator pretty simply to, to create the the, the, the library itself. And then it automatically gets added on the TS file. So what we mean is it uses the Angular CLI well. So NX is built on top of the Angular CLI. Meaning you don't have to download a new CLI for NX. You can use the existing Angular CLI and it's going to manage your apps for you 
as you can see. For instance, now when you want to when you want to generate a new component, it's the same generate from Angular. We just have an extra an extra argument that says it's on app UI components. So when I when I do that generate, it, it automatically puts the button on UI components. Meaning now that button I can use it on both of my apps. All right. And uh, and we automatically import the UI components module on the app.module.ts file. I am going to demo some of this at the end, so no need to look at too much of the code. So the great thing now about NX is that you can use it to test, build, and serve your apps using those, those same commands that you know using Angular. And a nice thing about using NX is that it comes with linters as well, automatically. So when you download the, the NX from NPM in, using NPM install, you're going to come with a default linter, which is TSLint, I think. And when you have TSLint, you ensure that all your developers are writing code that actually works. And then once you make sure that your shitty developers are writing correct code, you can get a code formatter. So you make sure that your shitty developers are not putting space are not putting tabs instead of spaces. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about affected apps. So now I have I have I have my amazing NX workspace, right? And I have all of these libraries and I have all of these apps that I'm managing in one repo. What happens then when I make a change to a file on my library? That's what's awesome about NX is that it tells you exactly where your, 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 your change is. It tells you exactly what it's going to affect. It's going to tell you exactly which of the apps that are being used by this component that you're modifying. It's going to tell you exactly which of the libraries depend on this component that you're using. And you can just do an NPM run affected apps and it'll show you the apps that you're using. And then what's cool about that is you can build, you can rebuild a portion of the app. You can rebuild a portion of the app where, 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 where the file change that you made is affected. So if, imagine if you had six apps and you, and you changed one file. Imagine having to rebuild all of that. So with NX, what it says that we know which apps are affected, we're just going to rebuild all of those apps. The same with unit testing. When you run unit tests, it knows which, which of the apps are being affected, and it just runs unit tests for that particular app instead. And there's obviously more that I'm not mentioning that I'm not mentioning that NX can do, like it can manage uh, dependency. You can it can manage all your dependency injections with uh, ngrx. It can simplify fetching of data. It can help you facilitate the migration from Angular JS to, say, instance, Angular 8. But I literally don't have much time to talk about that because I just want to show you a few cool tricks. Yeah. The next, I hope I can show you some code on VS Code. <coughs> I can't. Uh, Jerry, I think I'm going to need some help here so I can show some, some code. Sorry? tab instead. All right. Sorry? I think it still is. Yeah. All right. All right, guys, I'm not sure if we can all see. It looks like it's a bit too small. Can we see at the back? Uh, let's see if I can do a zoom. Mm. Ah, it doesn't matter. Can 
Can we now see? All right. All right, so here I have an example project where I have two apps, namely the products app and the cart app. One of the apps is written in Java, one of the apps is written in Angular, and the other app is written in React, as you can see right over here. It's a React app, and the other app is written in, in Angular, as you can see over here. Now, what's great about this is that we can define components on our on our libs folder, and we can use them across our two apps, even though they are separate frameworks. So even though I have a React framework, and even though I have a Angular framework, when I come here to my libs and I look at shared, for instance, for my, let's take uh, styles for instance. I know that my styles are now shared in both of my on my on my React and on my my Angular app. Right. For instance, if I create like library for my cards over here and add state, uh, the state is actually that state is actually shared across both of the apps, both the Angular and the React app. Let's see if I can show you a dependency graph. Here. Seriously hope this works. It wasn't working this morning. Awesome. Oh, let's see. All right, so if we look at this dependency graph, it clearly shows us that we have two apps, namely being our products app and our carts app. And then it shows us the library and each of the dependencies that the apps have. For instance, if we trace the carts app, it has a dependency on, it has a dependency on the carts page app and also a dependency on some of the shared assets. Like if I trace the dependency here. And if I, and when I look at this shared header, it just means that only my cart app sh uses this header, and it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily shared with, it's not necessarily shared with my products uh, page, my products app, sorry. And when I look at my shared assets, I can see yeah. that on my app, yeah, sorry? It is actually shared. Are you talking about the shared header? Yeah, a bit more up. Yeah. Oh, with the shared assets. Where? Down, down a bit. Down the curve. Left. <laughs> what? <laughs> Chris. The left. The other left. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Almost there. Go a bit more left. A bit more left. Down. 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 There we go. Yes. Which one? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? It's the one that comes down from the products. Oh, I see it. Oh, I see it. <laughs> My bad. My bad, sorry. <laughs> so once we've looked at our dependency graph, uh, NX gives us some really cool build tools. Build tools. For instance, if you want to build products. Um, Is there like a different view of the same thing, like not like such a basic? You can. You can toggle the apps that you want to see. Uh, you can toggle the apps that you want to see because usually when you have a lot of apps, then the dependency graph can actually get really messed up. So you can. Yeah, you, you, pretty, much, you pretty much can. And when you want to build, it comes, it, com it comes, it literally comes, so you don't have to type on your terminal anymore. It just knows the correct, um, it just knows the correct, um, the, the correct commands that you have to use in order to, to deploy. Or if you want to run it, uh, let's see if I want to run cart serve. So I click on run. So then now it begins executing the task for me. I hope this works, because I haven't. Uh, 
using it with this. And let's see if I can run something else while we're doing that. All right, it's taking a while to run the cards app. I'm just going to cancel that before the demo cards get angry at me. Uh, all right. Um, let's see if I can run the products page. So 0% compiling. I should have pre-compiled this before the demo. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want to. All right, so let's just pretend that it finished building. Once it finished building, it's going to serve up my Angular app. Uh, at the products page is like built in Angular, and I'm going to show you. Oh my God! Why did it? Yeah, not yet. It's still compiling. Uh, I just need it to run. All right, so it's taking a really long while to run. I have no idea why. Awesome. All right, so now that our app is running, uh, if we take a look at that header component, uh, it, I can definitely assure you that it's the same header component that we use even on our React front end, because like when we look at the code for it, we can just see that it's it's just a it's just a normal element.ts file, and we have all of our code for the header there, and we have all of our CSS for the header, and we can definitely assure you that if we if I come here and look at my products, and I look at my home page. Open my home page. I use, uh, sorry, not this one. I use, not this one, sorry. Oh, right. So I import my shared UI from NX example from my shared library and I, and I use it and I then use it on my browser right over here. So some of these components that I'm using here on my browser are the same components that I'm going to be using on my Cards app. For some reason the Cards app was just taking too long to, to run. So I just have to show you the, the Cards app. And just because I'm running out of time, I'm going to take a few questions from you guys, if you guys have any questions. All right.